Hi everyone, great to see you here again this year. Thanks for coming to our talk. Appreciate your, your interest in our work. So over many years now, we've been collaborating with Swift to bring you the ability to use uh, Swift messages and Swift standards in order to efficiently interact with blockchains with minimal additional investment by your institutions. I'm very happy to say that this diagram that we uh, presented uh, in the second pilot with Swift uh, last year has now become a reality. So now we are in a pre-production stage where we can start offering you something that you can actually start using with your existing institutional systems. The way that the system works, and this is how it will actually work in production for your systems to properly execute transactions using the SWIFT messages and SWIFT standards, is that there is a pre-settlement phase. The pre-settlement phase is where everyone agrees on what the nature of the transaction is. This is done through traditional SWIFT messages about settlement status, what the intent of the transaction is, and what you and your institutions want to achieve with the transaction. This continues to happen over the SWIFT network. The next stage of the transaction is where things get interesting. You basically need to interact with a blockchain in order to do a digital asset transaction, whether that's for a tokenized fund, a real world asset, central bank digital currency, any number of actual on-chain assets. This is where Chainlink comes in and starts to solve uh, very critical problems of turning those SWIFT messages into blockchain events. Let's look at what this looks like in, in practice. This is the actual demo uh, application that we'll be showing you here at Cybos that you can come and experience with us at booth C40, just a few steps to the left from the stage here. And there's a number of different uh, capabilities it has around creating an account, providing information about uh, an asset and providing identity verifications for the account. But we're gonna look at the DVP part of the transaction. So here's the pre-settlement stage where all the pre-settlement SWIFT transactions have happened and the status of the transaction has moved on to confirmed. Once it is confirmed and that tra transactional message MT548 is sent into the Chainlink system, it is then converted to an on-chain process. In that on-chain process, the SWIFT message is evaluated using cryptography that it was sent from the appropriate private key, and then it is turned into a blockchain transaction. In this case, the blockchain transaction is about locking an asset in anticipation of a payment. So now the asset has been locked by the buyer custodian in anticipation of the seller receiving a payment. Then we go to the next stage of the flow. The next stage of the flow is where we also use SWIFT to execute the actual SWIFT payment. So this means that the existing payment rails that all of you use today to do payments using SWIFT are now basically reusable for the purposes of digital asset transactions. In this stage, you are doing a payment as you've traditionally done it using SWIFT. And in the process of doing that payment, you create a confirmation message. That confirmation message is then sent into, this, into the Chainlink system under this payment category. So this is the payment flow, and this is the tracking of the payment flow. And the tracking of the payment flow basically results in a final payment confirmation message. This payment confirmation message is then converted into an on-chain event. So you've created a payment message through Swift. Now we've had a payment message converted into an on-chain event. That conversion turns the Swift payment message in an acceptable form of payment for a digital asset transaction. That is the other big innovation here. So the first innovation is that you can use Swift messages to interact with blockchains. The second big innovation is the ability for the SWIFT um, payment system to be reusable to settle digital asset transactions because the off-chain SWIFT payments are now converted into an on-chain payment receipt. This is where the delivery part of a flow takes place, in which case the Chainlink system now writes that there's an asset unlock and transfer transaction. And that means that the Chainlink system does the relevant on-chain event to unlock the asset in return for the payment that happened in the traditional world. So this means that your traditional payment system in SWIFT is now reusable for conducting payments 
that result in digital asset transactional settlement. At the end of this flow, what you've done is you've generated a pre-settlement phase using your existing flows, which makes it very easy for you. You've generated an initial interaction with the blockchain as the seller of the asset where you've locked it in anticipation of a payment. Then you have received payment through the SWIFT network and, you've con and, we and Chainlink has converted that payment into an on-chain payment receipt. That on-chain payment receipt has then resulted in the final transfer of the asset to the buyer. And this has all been done using the existing standards, the existing infrastructure, the existing systems that you now rely on with the same private key security. And therefore you can achieve all of this interaction with hundreds of blockchains with extremely minimal cost, which is the goal we set out with SWIFT many years ago. And now I'm very thrilled to say that we have a working staging pre-production system that you can demo with us at the booth and that we are more than happy to start integrating and thinking about how to properly implement for you to achieve all of these great outcomes for your digital asset plans in a very efficient, cost-effective, and a highly secure manner. Just to see what this looks like from the beginning, we would go to the message generation. We wouldn't create an account. We wouldn't add identity to the account in this case. We'd issue an actual transaction. We'd select uh, who's involved and the type of security, which varies by the parties involved. And then we would start uh, to see the transaction happen. So here we are in the pre-settlement phase, where during the process of pre-settlement, we are seeing the agreement of what the transaction is about. That agreement then leads to the locking of the asset as agreed in the pre-settlement phase. Then we need to do payment. So now we're doing the payment stage where the SWIFT system is doing the necessary payments. And then once the payment is complete, we're doing the delivery phase where the delivery of the asset in return for the payment is being successfully completed. And that is the entire working flow in a stage where we can help you go live with it today. So this is not a concept. This is not an idea. This is not a plan. This is a product. This is a product that you can start integrating with and interacting with, and you can get on a roadmap where you can begin to interact with hundreds of different digital assets using your existing systems, your existing private keys, your existing SWIFT standards as the way to do that. So I'm very excited to bring that to you here for the first time. I think it's very cool because it basically accelerates the rate at which all of this technology can be adopted by you. And how our industry can become a bigger and bigger, bigger part of the capital markets. In order to generate um, all of these great innovations, we had to make a number of uh, pieces of technology that we've been making already for many years, even separately from our work with Swift. One of those pieces of technology is the blockchain privacy manager that you see here. Here uh, at Cybos, we're also releasing the blockchain privacy manager to a select group of, of users. The first user that's already now publicly starting to use it is ANZ which is a large uh, bank in Australia, which that has been announced today. But the blockchain privacy uh, manager is uh, becoming accessible for a small select group of folks. And if you'd like to be part of that group, feel free to come by our booth uh, C40, just here to the left, a few steps. The blockchain privacy manager basically creates a layer of protection between your chains and other chains, as well as data systems and your chain. So the blockchain privacy manager is where you can configure what information flows into and out of your chain and what information goes between your chain and other chains. The blockchain privacy manager is configurable with different policies about both the information that can enter and exit your chain. This is quite exciting because as we all know, privacy has been a deeply lacking quality in the blockchain industry. And this is one of the limiting factors that has kept the capital markets from adopting digital assets and blockchains. The blockchain privacy manager is a set of very robust tools that can allow you to manage the privacy assumptions of everything related to your chain, other people's chains, and so on. It also allows the data from your bank to be selectively placed into certain chains, but not others, and allows you to authoritatively manage what information can and can't reach chains from your bank. So for example, let's say you want to have a proof of funds or a proof of reserves piece of data flow on chain. The blockchain privacy manager allows you to manage whether that data goes on chain or not and to which chains it goes. So it is a kind of protection so that you can interact with all the digital assets you want under a set of policies that create the relevant amount of privacy and it works across many different chains, 
and enables privacy across various blockchain technologies. So it isn't specific to any one chain technology. The blockchain privacy manager is something we applied in the SWIFT uh, demonstration and staging pre-production demo that I just showed you. Uh, in this case, the blockchain privacy manager played a key role in the cross-chain piece. When we combine the blockchain privacy manager with our cross-chain interoperability protocol called CCIP, we generate something called CCIP private transactions. So CCIP private transactions are cross-chain transactions that are completely private and where the privacy is configurable. This means that the cross-chain transaction is not viewable by the people doing the transaction, by the people executing the transaction as the bridge provider. They're only viewable in part to the relevant parties. So basically what, what you can expect from us is both a set of interoperability solutions that let you use systems like Swift in order to efficiently integrate, and now a set of privacy solutions so that your systems can integrate and interact with chains in an efficient way that keeps the data private. Here, we are also announcing that next week uh, we will be releasing into production the Deco Sandbox. So the Deco Sandbox is another privacy tool. It wasn't used in this case in the Swift work, but it is a privacy tool we've been building for many years that relates to data. What Deco does is it basically allows you to get data verified and to keep it private. So what that means is you can verify the status of an identity. For example, that the identity is not on a sanctions list. And you can prove to the smart contract that the identity you want to conduct a transaction with is not on a sanctions list. But the details of the identity remain private. So you're no longer forced to share identity information or any private data on chain. You can simply run the prover and the verifier of Deco and generate an authoritative proof that proves that the identity data meets the requirements of the transaction. And you can prove that with cryptography. And then you keep the actual identity data off chain. And this meets the necessary threshold to comply with AML KYC various regulations, and so on. So this is another very big step forward where information remains private, but becomes usable on chain in order to allow a transaction to work properly. This is the interface that people will be able to interact with as soon as uh, next week, where we're announcing and launching this fully to the public at SmartCon, our conference in Hong Kong. And you can also learn more about it at our booth C40 here to the left where if you have various identity challenges or data challenges with getting information on a blockchain, that is also now a problem that we have uh, solved and can provide to you on production. The next thing that we're announcing uh, here at Cybos is that the unstructured uh, data problem of financial markets is now becoming uh, significantly simpler to deal with. So together with Euroclear, Swift, a number of large asset managers, a number of large banks, and utilizing multiple different blockchain technologies. We have uh, been able to take corporate actions data as the first use case, which is a traditionally very unstructured piece of data that lives in various formats and various places that is not very machine readable or structured. And by combining AI, so LLM models and Oracle networks, we have generated a authoritative golden record about corporate actions that is reliable. So there's really two things going on here. The first thing is that the corporate actions data problem is getting solved by combining AI and Oracle networks together to do certain levels of data validation and data transformation that's important. And then the second thing that's happening is you're taking a piece of unstructured information that's error prone. The estimates that we see is that corporate um, action errors cost up to 600 billion a year and that those uh, problems and those errors are getting eliminated because the unstructured data is becoming structured. The next thing that's happening is that this structured data that's now reliable and machine readable because AI and LLM networks have been combined to properly make the data usable is getting turned into what we call a unified golden record. So a unified golden record is a single source of truth a single source of truth in the sense that it is the authoritative piece of data 
that exists on chain. And it doesn't just exist on one chain, it exists on multiple chains because of the cross-chain capabilities of CCIP. So if the unified golden record gets updated in one chain, it automatically gets updated in all the other chains. And so it's a single authoritative piece of data that's accessible by multiple smart contracts, but will always reflect the same single source of truth across chain infrastructure. And so it's usable by all the contracts in all the different chains, but it's also the authoritative single source of truth. And through the work that I just showed you with Swift, that is then going to be made compatible with Swift messages and Swift standards and Swift ways of dealing with that data on a blockchain. The problems that we're really um, solving for the capital markets and for the Swift community and you know, for the banking community and the asset management community is the ability for blockchains to result in useful digital asset transactions at a very low cost of implementation in a very efficient way and an extremely secure way. So the first stage of that process is what I showed you earlier about writing in key pieces of data into the contract. Then you have to control the privacy of the contract and whether or not it is private and what parts of it can be known by who, by the regulator, by the counterparty, who can view what information about the contract, regardless of the technology they're using and the technology you're using. Third problem is how do you synchronize all of that information and all of those interactions together with the existing financial tools, existing standards, existing Swift messages, existing routing systems of Swift that you already use. That's kind of the third big challenge. And so what all of these challenges being solved means is that you reach a kind of threshold where you can do essentially a transaction across chains. To do that cross-chain transaction, you need more data and you need more synchronization. But eventually you get to a world where an asset is issued on one blockchain, like I showed you in the initial flow. Then it is moved across to another blockchain over CCIP. And in the process, all the relevant data and all the relevant integration with the existing systems happens in a seamless, efficient, secure way. And the privacy of the transaction is maintained so that you can meet all of your compliance, legal, and other requirements. So this is essentially what we've been able to achieve. This is what we offer the capital markets community and the, the SWIFT community. And I'm very excited to find a way to work with many of you and encourage you to come join us at our booth, once again, here to the left, a few steps. We also have a number of talks going on here at uh, Cybos. We have a talk about the corporate actions demonstration I just uh, gave you, where we go into more depth about how AI and Oracle networks and DLTs can be combined to solve the unstructured data problem and to provide that in a unified golden record format that works across chains. Then we have uh, a session on identity, which I encourage everyone to join. That relates to some of the privacy concerns and other issues that we described as well as cross-chain. And then we also have a session about interoperability and the network effects there. We also have a happy hour today at four to six that you're welcome to join us at, where we'll have many folks from the team that will be ready to answer your questions and talk through how we can help implement some of the things I've shown you on production. So it's really great uh, to be here again, and it's a real pleasure to chat with many of you already. I'm looking forward to speaking with uh, many more of you during the conference and at the booth, and I'm excited to find a way to have the SWIFT network, unstructured data, and all of these privacy concerns uh, become a good set of tools that you can use to properly execute digital asset transactions in a useful, efficient, secure way. This is basically what we're offering now through an entire suite of tools that solve those problems together in a cohesive, uh, thoughtful, efficient way. And I'm very excited um, to see how we can help you solve those problems and go to the next stage of your digital asset strategies. So thank you very much and looking forward to, uh, to meeting many of you during the conference. Thank you.